is very good. Yeah, but I feel like Joker does have a lot of different options. I mean, his Shen's also fantastic and something that has seen bans before. Tom Kench was the final ban here, and a freak of freaks say, all right, we'll take the Ezreal. Last time we saw aiming on this champion, he looked pretty terrible. So yeah, I, mean, honestly, I don't want to beat around the bush. He just looked crap. Aiming has had really, real huge struggles in his last couple of matches. You remember all the Ash arrows hitting him oh, on Callista. Yeah. Thankfully, Ash say. globally banned now, so we're totally fine. Just to give you guys the update here in game number one, Ash, sometimes her arrow is just invisible. So uh, she's not going to be playing. And remember the champion he had the struggles on? It was against his own. Yeah. His Sivir timing on his spell shield was uh, off, let's say, is the <laughs> nicest way to put it. And so then the panic flash into just dead. I don't think Sandbox is too concerned with giving up Ezreal. There's a lot of champions that can take priority against Ezreal. Whoa. Could be something shenanigans like a J spot lane. Could be a Draven that we know that Ghost loves to visit, not so much recently. I, if you're a Freaker, one, of, one interesting approach you could take is getting Joker to blind pick a support and then actually putting Jelly on something lane dominant, finding a way to actually pressure Joker because you don't want to allow him to, you don't want to just take a, a tank support, let's say if Tom Kench wasn't bad, Tom Kench, and then give Joker a free Shen lane. You don't want that. Yeah. You want to actually make him accountable where possible. Right now, Afrika got some pretty strong pick tools with the Jarvan and the Lissandra. A first round Shen is actually what you want when you ban away two champions from Joker because Shen definitely not known as for his laning phase. And I don't know if Sandbox will feel like they have to find coverage bans for the Shen. Exactly. Well, he has lost once on the Shen so far, but out of three games, that ain't too bad. And uh, Sandbox pretty good at getting through the laning phase and then using him as a battle tool in their split push play that they do around the map. And with Tom Kench banned, they banned it themselves. He is the only other option, really, for facilitating that sort of play from the support position. But if I'm a coach of any team playing Sandbox in the next couple of weeks, I look at this draft so far and I'm like, oh, I need to know how this game goes. And the reason why I say that is, you take away the ultra comfort of Galio and Thresh and Sandbox, a first rounding support Shen, a champion, this straight up sucks in the 2v2. So oh, yeah. when you see that, you're like, is this finally the way that we attack Sandbox? Is this something that will work? It's a very interesting learning tool when this game is over. The hindsight is going to be very valuable. Zooming in on the bands in the second round, Urgot actually made it through the first round and won't be allowed to be a very safe blind pick top lane on the side of Afrika. Silver Ban is going to head towards Ghost. He still has something like the Callista if he wants to go for an AD carry, the Draven, the Victor. These are all open. Very interesting Vladimir to see how we approach them. Like you say, the Vladimir for the Vladimir Shen that show up later in the game is available as well. Yeah, he hasn't actually played Vladimir so far this game, but this could be the debut as our Sandbox immediately. Block that one away. It was sort of looming, and certainly a lot of flex potential here on the side of Sandbox. We can see three carries here, but we don't quite know where they're all going. Now, it's Vladimir Shen most likely as a duo. Of course, Shen can flex, but it's a support so far effectively in 2019. Yeah, And it's also Ghost's Vlad. And you noted that it's his first time playing this season. Let me tell you a story what? about Ghost Vlad. It's Maybe we'll have Elaine, Sejuani, or Jarvan Spirit, in this game. did you name change to Dread? What is happening here? I'm guessing this might be Elaine, Sejuani. I hope so. That'd be fun. Elaine, Sejuani happened, of course, in the EULCS, or LEC, I should say, mm -hmm. a couple of times. And Caps played it in mid. And in the actual LEC, it was top lane pick for Wander. So we'll get more information about that in a bit. One thing I want to bring up. Do you remember Ghost's BBQ Oliver's bot lane, Vladimir? Because... He was the worst oh, Vlad we was. had in the league. He was abysmal on the Vladimir. By far. By far the worst. So we're going to see if he's actually wrapped his head around it. The other awesome dudes, the Victor, for example, very impressive. But because this is a weak laning 2v2, how will Ghost look on what was before a black mark in his champion pool? Yeah, absolutely. And as you can see, the team compositions have come together. And it's Sandbox wanting to shove themselves as fast and loose towards the Afrika Freaks as they can possibly go. And Afrika Freaks with a very standard composition at the moment. It's Dread in the jungle, but that could change. Not anymore, 19 seconds. So the Piggy Lady will be in the jungle, and Jarvan is the one meeting the uh, Jace on the top side of the map. So an interesting matchup here for Keen in the Summit. But the epitome of a snowball matchup, because obviously early you're taking a couple of Q trades from yep. range and dealing with a melee versus range matchup. If you get those first couple of kills and buy some AD, 
the amount you can dunk solo in the 1v1, but even more importantly, remember, you have the melee auto attack synergy with the Sejuani passive. Yeah. You just rack up kills, and Jace finds it very hard to enter lane. However, that's with finding a lead. Without the snowball, obviously the lane is range versus melee, so let's see how much attention Keen needs to stabilize a matchup against an opponent he would know oh so well. Remember, Afrika, where the in Kings are in-house scrims. So these guys have probably played each other hundreds of times. Yeah, if not more than that, Papa. I'm glad you bring that one up. But we have to admit that we've been watching Summit play Jace, and he hasn't looked like he's had any trouble in any melee no. matchup that he's ever been in on this pickup. So Keen certainly throwing the gauntlet. Let's see whether it lands right now. Sandbox fans and full voice as we enter the rift for game number one. Joker thinking about a bit of a face check. Not sure whether that was a visual bug, him stepping out there as he, the entirety of the Afrika Freaks minus aiming are going to walk over a ward. What a Bazinga ward that is. That, yeah. that ward is getting ultra value in this game. This is the sort of game you definitely want to full invade as Afrika because both solo lanes here are heavily advantage sandbox. Yeah. Zoe is a lane counter to Lissandra. Obviously doesn't necessarily manifest a level one or anything like that, but a very good matchup for the Zoe. And Jace versus Jarvan, something we've already explained. Bot lane, very fine for Afrika, but not necessarily going to have too much priority outside, say, level two, three, where Ezreal and Braum can do a lot of work. Vladimir and Shen will take a long time to get going, but the top side here and just finding a way to get some gold on your champions, get your first item rolling, is so desperately wanted by Afrika that fishing for an invade was one way to just warp the game state, get some flashes, and find advantages through that. Yeah, and you can see Kane, interesting choice here, has gone for Summon Airy to get those uh, spear poke shots as they've mirrored their builds here. Oh, there we go. Summon Airy comes hey, down. That's some lane presence. Spirit approved. Exactly. Throw out the flag. Is he going to max flag first on the top side? Ooh. That'd be one way to approach it. I can't wait for him to come back with an amp tome. First item. That's the truth. After the first series, if that happens, I'm, I'm not sure yeah. if I'll be okay. Please <laughs> check on me. Twitch chat and check on me too, Atlas. Yeah, I will. I will. I'll do my very best. I've already had a cast to walk out on me so far this season. I don't want it to happen again. It's not you. It's them. I hope so. It's starting to feel like an ominous trend, though. All right. But something keeps getting bopped by these flags, and I'm starting to believe more and more that the old uh, AP On the upside, could work. Remember, usually you have to stutter step forward in Q, and Jace will sidestep X percent of the Q trades. If you are going for E, there is very little animation to juke, so yeah, there is some validity to looking like... Maybe you go the support route. If you guys know, like, Karma support, it'd be Q three points into max E. Maybe you go E three points into max Q. Yeah, sort of like the Lucian thinking as well, sure. you know. Uh, free nerf, of course, on uh, 9.4. Harden plays. Going to cost a little bit more and do a little bit less. But at the moment, like, on 9.3 right now, certainly has been a tool where you put a few extra points Wait. in it. You rush Arden Sensor and team fight as Jarvan, giving Arden Sensor to your team. Oh, to Dread on the Sejuani yeah. carry. Think of how fast the passive is brought. Oh my goodness. Briss will be so incredibly amped up. Spirit will be amped up too, as that's not good. Yeah, King gonna get booped back here as Dread has to come in <laughs> just to protect his silly commando Jarvan. Oh man. Ships in the night on the chase yeah. there. Oh my god. Yeah. That's Summit. not the start you wanted as a Freak of Freaks. No, that's a whoopsie. Uh, that's a whoopsie. As a <laughs> I'm glad he doesn't have one of those weird uh, back animations because of that skin being so incredibly old because it could have been just uh, even more sad if he's trying to look cool after not looking very cool. The only way that could have been worse if one of them drifted into turret range and had to flash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Didn't happen. Bot lane priority, like we mentioned, going to be there. So that's something you can plug and play. Vlad and Shen is the lane that I've had the most nasty words for. Yes, it is not exactly... It's a lane that I feel loses gracefully, but it definitely loses every single time. It's hard to kill it with fire, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. But apart from that... Unless you're deaf and uh, your opponent's cheap. Shen, as long as he taunts out, you hold on to the pool. It gets way better. Vladimir, of course, we know, is the looming terror of the late game. Yeah. But that is a much later thing, and you feel so good if you close your eyes, wake up, and it's 20 minutes in, and Shen's ready to teleport to a 1-3-1 side laner, and Vlad is just wave a mid, 
see the four part that is the part you tend to forget. It's kind of yeah. like when you have an epic pop-off game as AD carry and then walk into lane the same champion. Like, I'm slow and I attack real slow. And yep. This is what happens in the early game, unfortunately. That's why I like swapping champions after every single game. Otherwise, I just get depressed and I keep canceling my autos. Because Good I'm way to stay in uh, wood tier elo as well. I know, right? Never just main one champion is my motto. LS disapproved. Yeah, I just don't like winning cover smitty. It's not my, it's not my plan. Gino fan for life. Aiming at Jelly. Gonna continue pushing this one forward, but at the moment, you can see that Ghost and Joker are not really getting too threatened here. See a scat by about 20, at uh, around when the laning phase ending is a decent one, is okay, Joker dives on forward, gets a lot of value out of the Spirit's Refuge, as Ghost was maybe slightly on a different page, but his time to get some free farming in is definitely time not wasted. Spirit's Refuge is of lesser value in as your Braum lane, because the Q, of course, not going to be dodged by Spirit's Refuge, and you can start the Braum passive, at least, with the um, Q of his own. So, yeah, the fact that you can do that negates some of what is sometimes huge value. Especially against Braum. Yeah, exactly. Braum. All right, the there's the flash in. Aiming is being ignited as Ghost doesn't want to blow his flash here. Joker. Oh, man, he might be the oldest member of the team, but he's certainly not the one that doesn't want to pull the trigger, you know? It's not the level head here for Joker. And you understand the timing? It's because he has a river ward that sees that the support has left and is clearly going to be helping with getting the Brom passive and thus picking up the Rift Scuttler faster. But that was a, a timing where something could happen. Unfortunately, his lane partner is Vladimir, so yeah. there's no way for Vlad to do anything. The minion wave is in the wrong spot, and it just ends up being a donation of both summoners and not even forcing aiming out of lane. Well, Ghost's trade was to catch up in farm, which in a Shen Vladimir lane, lose gracefully, that ain't bad. You know, you gotta use uh, Vladimir and Shen laning terminology when it comes to describing whether or not we're winning or losing. This reminds me of solo queue where you feel like you could hit that epic taunt flash and you nail the mechanics. Yep. Unfortunately, there are no allies near you. No one else can get over the terrain that you were able to. Yeah, You're right. He actually impressed us mechanically, but that wasn't the spot to do so. <laughs> no, it certainly wasn't. It's like when the Jarvis, you know, flag drag cataclysms. He's like, I got him, <laughs> and then he's dead. But he didn't have flash. Why didn't you get in <laughs> why there? Why didn't you? Why? Where are you guys? And they're like, not even on the screen. Beautiful. So I'm glad that Hecarim's out of the meta for that reason. Although he's still certainly in solo queue at the moment. He got buffed too. So actually, I think his solo queue win rate could be pretty insane. Yeah. On patch 9.4. Not in my Woody Allo like like we've been uh, referring to. I think Sandbox have. Pretty Supreme Siege, which is two champions to discuss. The Zoe and the Jace are yeah. Siege Enders of repute. Side lane wise, though, we already mentioned that the Jarvan versus Jace might actually force it to be a Siege game with the Jace rather than a side lane Jace game. And even Summoner being down on Jace will be pretty consequential. Scaling wise, 5v5 is so weird to talk about because Sandbox don't really 5v5. Vlad's a 5v5 only champion, but he might end up being a side lane champion and trying to push a lead. He can also do that though. Exactly. You know, you, he, he can put a, a Vladimir in sort of a Nasus or a Lowey situation where he makes a whole bunch of people come to him and then you can take things elsewhere on the map and that does fit Sandbox's style just in general as a team. Isn't it weird to consider we might have Vlad 4-1-ing as the yeah. notable, as the AD carry player and then sieging with everyone else? Very strange. Very, very strange. Is uh, also going to finish off the Proto Belt for a one item spike instead of getting the Fiendish Codex or anything like that early on as Dredd looking for Joker, but he'll be able to just taunt his way over the wall. Dredd no should definitely have ulted. Remember, Joker has no summoners, so that right. was a free chance to at least try something and ends up just holding on to the ultimate there. Unsure why he was so defensive in that scenario. I think one flick has snuck in here. I'm not sure how he managed to do that. It looked like he did it right under the nose of the Afrika Freaks, but feels like he has actually made it forward as Joker. Oh, baiting, baiting. What do you reckon? Is there's the arcane shift and on fleek. He's biding his time. He made it to level six. There's the flash immediately out from aiming. He will have that E back off cooldown relatively quickly, but the knockup's not good enough there for on fleek and hasn't popped the ultimate, thankfully. So they will have an opportunity to utilize that further down the track. Definitely was able to sneak in, that part was confirmed, but just like with the Shen Taunt Flash, no follow-up available for the duo lane with the lane spacing. 
it's all happening around a duo lane that's pretty content to farm, but despite there being quite a lot of action bot side, hasn't stemmed the bleeding to a noticeable degree. No, not happening just yet. You can see Kane, he's built his Ninja Tab. He hasn't been able to complete something like a Tiamat just yet, which you can imagine he's going to be coming in relatively quickly in this build. We'll see where his build does decide to go. I like more AD, but I think you, have you can to see go, that you can go tank. But you have to go full damage because you have so much threat onto Zoe and Jace. That yeah. I think it's almost incorrect to go for any tanky builds. And you can go two item spike, something like a Black Cleaver. There's a lot of different ways you can approach the damage. Like you say, Tiamat, Hydra of some description is usually the start of a Jarvan. Yeah, where he goes. Aside from that, Black Cleaver is something that would make a lot of sense, but I don't really know what the Jarvans on the top side of the map have been building as of late. I know I personally go Lethality, yeah. but it's probably not a great move. Okay uh, against Jace, but I think you want to go something that straddles yeah. the line a little bit more in terms of impact against other champions. Been a slow game. No uh, neutrals taken. Rift Herald not even scouted at this point. Not often it's 10 minutes 30 and there's no ward of any description on Rift Herald. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like these two teams are wondering how the heck it made it to 10 minutes because nothing's actually happened just yet. And Sandbox are a team that have generally been through at least five kills on both sides of the Rift so far in a game like this. And we should note, given it being Vladimir Shen, wake me up when 20 minutes ends, yeah. does seem to favor Sandbox they will have that mid-game window where they can actually get a fight or if they can extend the lead around the Jace or build a lead there. There are a lot of tricky things they can do in the non-interactive Vladimir laning phase. Yeah, Jelly going to have the winter fight on cooldown as Dread dives on forward now. Still hasn't thrown out the ultimate, but Jelly, he's going to throw out his. Joker will be falling. A lot of CC going down though. Hemoplay getting some value from Joker to the Infernal Chains pullback. Jelly, they're not ready for it. As Yukal down here on the bottom side will claw his way up. Oh! Summit predicts it, and Sandbox even the trade. He had the prediction there from Summit. Nicely done against his old squad. Down goes Yukal, not an old teammate, but someone he likes to add to the kills. A lot of action bot sides seem like Joker will give up his life up for nothing. They do exit with a kill. Yeah, Joker actually had his flash available, but his priority was trying to taunt up as many people as possible, and thankfully for Sandbox, they're able to take down Yukal, and if that's not the most sandbox thing you've ever seen, I don't know what is. The support saying, well, I could get out, but nah, I'm going further in. I don't care if I die, even if it's first blood, if we can get anything back for it. Honestly, if you're flashing out there, you're going to die anyway, so save it for a taunt flash, thinks Joker, and it ends up being a smart call. He's back in the lane. Still has his ultimate available. Laning phase extends. Really nice little moment there for Summit. Justifies the teleport. Yeah, very nicely done. Let's have a look at it again. Watch the replay through all of this. Remember, it's Sandbox fighting before they like to. They want another 10 minutes of farming around this duo lane. Joker's super low, but gets a three-man taunt that extends this fight longer. There is no decision to teleport for Keen. He's on a back timing, as far as we can tell. Goes over the wall. Yukal doesn't take the max range of the E either. It's not about a fixed distance like a portal jump yeah, usually Yeah, he just is. wanted to get the heck out of there, right? And it gets punished by the EQ from Summit. Really nicely done there from Sandbox, but as the dust settles, it will be a slight ad advantage over to the Afrika Freaks. And that kill going on to Dread will accelerate this Sejuani just a little bit. And keeping him in relevance against On Fleek will be important. Sejuani, of course, going to be able to farm out very, very quickly. And we can see Keen already does have that tier map built up. Where he goes next is the question mark, but because Summit left lane, the Jarvan's feeling a little bit better here, despite the fact that. The one kill did go over to some. But this is a very good macro decision because they're starting the Rift Herald top side, even though, because Summit doesn't have teleport, they know they can't respond to an Ocean Drake play. Yep. But you just go around Summit, have the Shen ultimate, whether he's there in melee range or not, and make a play. Now, Ghost has walked up pretty damn far. Yeah, it's a very early pull there as well, as Ghost has to flash to get out of the way. Hemoplake does go down. There's the stance united. The Shen's going to turn up, but that may have just delivered a kill over to the Afrika Freaks. Aiming is going to grab his first of the game. And Joker gets out, and he's like, what the heck were you doing, Ghost? You got yourself killed. And that's one of those solo mistakes. Is the macro lane assignment was right. Ghost walking up and saying, what's happening around this Drake? was far too bold, Atlas. There was no need to walk around there. You're getting a Rift Herald pre-14 minutes on the top side. Joker doesn't die for it instantly. He still continues to sniff around. Kill goes the way of a freaking needlessly by Sandbox. Yeah, and also, I mean, Ghost, quite a few mistakes there. Doesn't use Proto Belt, uses his pull way too early. 
showing that we might be getting uh, some of the notes of the old BBQ ghost on the Vladimir that we saw in his uh, awesome dude attempts last year. And it wasn't necessarily about laning phase, it was finding it impossible to find multi-man Hemoplagues even when the enemy was grouped up. It was a lot of skill threading issues where he wasn't being able to yeah. use his E at every opportune moment. So we're gonna have to wait to be convinced by Ghost because positioning wise, that was a pretty big mistake. Now the maximum punishment is a 15 minute Ocean Drake, which is certainly not gonna be the Drake you're looking for. A first spawn Ocean is great, but you want it seven minutes in, not 15 yeah, minutes Yeah, the in. laning phase is pretty much over at this point. But they will be able to grab it, cycle to the next one, which will be Ocean number two. If only you could get to 11 Ocean Drakes. It's not a, not a thing that you can do. I think it's one that's pretty valuable for Sandbox, because then when we see a 4-1 or some description, uh, Jason Zoe would love to have at least one Ocean Drake, especially after yeah. the buff. Oh, well, Yukal would like half of his health bar back again. Uh, he's not going to have it at this point in time. Barrier picked up from Dove. As he goes to uh, take a turret shot, which is pretty perfect timing there, as the Rift Herald goes down in the mid lane, and Yukal, he's not exactly at a health position to or actually make a play here. Or an item breakpoint he has a Revolver and Merc Treads, because he's trying to be respectful in a tricky lane. The poke starts, and while the Rift Herald doesn't get all the work done, just a little bit of standing turret HP in the mid lane left for a freak of freaks. And also just a lot of resources needed to defend against that Rift Herald to stop that outer turret from going down. So aiming now by himself, Ghost and Joker are gonna get the shove in. And uh, the Vladimir is up to at least some better items with the Sorcerer's Shoes and the Fetish Codex, heading towards that 45% CDR that we know and love. Farming out on Lissandra in a very tricky matchup really does remind us, though, of some of the Aurelian Soul play we saw from yeah. Fly yesterday. Picking up this roaming mid laner, which Duke Carl's been playing a lot, and you know, a player with a lot of high expectation when he Absolutely. jumped onto a Freak of Freaks, a player who was so clearly hyped about joining a squad, famous for playing a lot of internal scrims and practicing a lot. Would have thought he would thrive in this scenario, but we and know Yukal man. can be a weapon atlas, and yeah. they just haven't really found a way to weaponize him because if you're just wave clearing in a bad matchup and building respectfully, it's not really improving the state of your team's early game. The worry for me is that he was always a man of, uh, like beyond his years. Was yes. Yukal. He was always someone that was known for keeping a level head no matter what, and he's just not playing like that this season whatsoever. It's a freak of freaks. Are looking to turn that one around? That's an instant kill on the Shen and a very proactive play coming in. Yukal tanks the turret and everything's fine. The opposite of a caster curse, one could say. Bit of a poor teleport though. Teleport very needless. They had vision on the enemy duo. They're getting out traded here by Sandbox because they just put too many people by. Well, I mean, Ghost might even actually keep himself alive here. He that was a good Sanguine pull. Dodges out of the ultimate. Still might not be enough as the Wizard's uh -oh. Fight is going to tag him up. No pool available. There's the flashes forward. Stand United again. This time not going to deliver the Shen because the Vlad dies too fast. Second kill there does negate some of the good movements, but I believe they were able to take both mid lane turrets. That's a really long mid lane now. Yeah, the map is all of a sudden extremely open from the middle. Freaka Macro and Ghost Vladimir, both of them counting against them, both worthy of some scoring there. Some big mistakes on both sides. Two kills for two turrets and a turret trade means overall maybe a small improvement for Afrika. But watch this play. Right now, what do they know? They know they have a teleport advantage. So we follow here. To the credit of Keen, there is no wards to show that Jace is not there for a counter gank. And Jace shows himself mid. They continue to move forward. So it's not. We had full information and made a worse decision than possible. But in the end, it looked like they'd get away from this. Ghost ult is fine, but actually he just moves up for a Tides of Blood when he could have just disengaged and lived. Instead he dies. Jelly yep. with two forms of CC enough to get through a second stand United. Basically squandered on the Vladimir. Yeah, now you've got a 1-0-3 Ezreal mirrored by his support. And this Sejuani is starting to get big. 100% kill contribution. And there's only one on the side of Sandbox. 4-1 to one is feeling pretty good for the Afrika Freaks, and they need any sort of feel-good situation on the scoreboard as possible after what has been a terrible first round robin thus far. If they can finish off with a win against the second place team, it's going to do wonders here for the Afrika Freaks moving in with, like you say, a whole bunch of new players for the next split. And aiming is the one who is relatively 
the strongest person on the map. Look at his item break oh, point yeah. now. He's soon to have Mira Mana. He went Trinity Force, a more expensive choice. Even some va uh, Vampiric Scepter. If he takes a bit of Zoe trading, he wants to lifesteal up in the mid lane. We sin. Afrika being surprisingly willing to go in to protect the silver comms or protect the aiming comms where he's a one threat. And he needs to actually be able to vindicate that as Soka's too far up. Yeah, he is. He's going to have to flash to get out of the way this one. Dove immediately cleanses Dread's uh, ultimate, but they're going for Joker. There's a conga line to get rid of this Shen. And Afrika Freaks will be able to take him down one more time. And remember, Afrika are fielding the roster with no spirit where mid game shot calling has been their biggest problems they traded down in terms of the turrets let's watch how they play out this game but this is usually where a lack of smart macro play has hurt Afrika's lineup as it's fielded today and it feels like it's happening right now you can see Jace towards the bottom side Vladimir towards the top side towers fall in quick succession but it's only one for our blue side it's two for the red as yeah, Ghost and Summit really taking a lot just for a death on the support. Four to two in turrets, the evolving question mark here. And Sandbox, when they eventually group around turrets, already have the Jace and Zoe to rain hell. So they're running Afrika around the map. Afrika just grouping too early, trying to force something in mid. When they don't have their lanes in the right spot to be so bold in one lane, just have aiming wave clear. Watch the mini map here. It's actually more important than what's happening on the map. You're like, oh, Joker, what are you doing, mate? You're too far up. But on the mini map, Vlad's pushing in. There's no coverage for them there. Not even any wards. Blue wards on the top side. Jace pushing in bot side. All they can do after this is take a mid lane turret while they're just slammed across the map. Exactly. And that bottom outer turret fell, and it's understandable that it, that it did, given the fact that it's Ezreal Braum against a Vladimir Shen lane. Aiming goes back to base, is going to augment his build just a little bit with a QSS, but that is not moving into his next tier territory just yet, but he is very strong at this moment in time. It's their latest attempt to wield aiming as the ultimate MVP of their club. Again, we talked about the silver comps. Now he's on Ezreal, who's hit his item spikes way ahead of the clock. It's just that aiming has made so many critical game losing errors that it's just undone what has been some good passage bait or some comps that could work. You have that asterisk of, can they make it work in this particular game? And we kind of have to be proven wrong because yeah. so far there have been those high profile mistakes. Yeah, there are situations where, you know, you've got the Kaiser picks up three kills, but it's Griffin, right? And you, you're expecting Viper to be able to always carry that one out. You know, Deft's Ezreal, if he gets any sort of lead, you have just a feeling in your bones that it's going to be a one game. Aiming on the Ezreal, I don't have that feeling at all right now. I have a feeling that Sandbox are well and truly not out of it yet. QSS picked up for Joker here. He doesn't want to get caught anymore. Three times is probably enough. I think the reason you do that is that you see how this game is playing out where Afrika trying to play one lane while Sandbox plays three, and you say, Joker just wants to look tasty and absorb some aggro while we run the enemy around the map. Speaking of running around the map, Afrika continue this roaming death squad. The only way to make this game narrow is to start hitting the Baron and force Sandbox to come to you, because right now they're finding all their wins in the one of the 131, not in the four or five. Yeah, they're actually able to completely uh take away the pressure that Afrika Freaks had on the top side of the map. They were trying to get that wave in a decent position, but the rest of the waves are going to crash on forward for Sandbox, and Afrika don't have that opportunity to actually siege anything. I feel like this Sandbox composition, as far as anti-siege, is working in a really unique way, where they've got enough pressure elsewhere on the map to avoid Afrika Freaks ever being able to group up without just losing trades. It's just real simple game fundamentals, right? It's being able to yeah. play the map, push your waves, things that have been relevant for so long. It's kind of mind boggling that Afrika Freaks, because of what we think of this team as being a very smart team in previous years, is now with a different oh. roster showing that it is very important to have some of those cooks. You know, they don't have Kuro, they don't have Tucson, they don't have Spirit playing in game number one. and. That means that they're just trying to brute force while the enemy gets the cultural victory around the map. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was my always favorite victory in Civilization. So I can understand it just doesn't work that well in uh, League of Legends. Just not a thing. Aiming going to take an accelerated shot glass to the face, but like you were talking about before, Papa, he does have the Vampiric Pure Acceptor built up. Lost Chapter now there as well. So it will, of course, be the double tier build. Doesn't actually have his next tier just yet, but wanted to have some extra stats. He's got power. He's going the power side of all the yeah. builds, and I, I see a lot of validity in that. Unfortunately, the enemy is just, you know, waving the white flag or asking for a bit of time. They're bunkering up, depending on what analogy you want. Yeah. 
and just waiting for a mistake, a macro mistake from Afrika. And I think that's actually a very astute way to play against what we've seen from Afrika in their first eight best of threes. Now, you find the right fight, you get the punishment, and there's a lot of standing gold for Afrika to just blow, explode this game into a 6,000 gold lead. But until that happens, everything Sandbox is doing is paying off just fine. Yeah, and at the moment, Dove's clearing out minion waves, and Joker, he can assist any of the side lanes easy as you would like. So the Afrika Freak's just out of a lot of answers here. You can see Keen moving up the bottom side of the map, but actually changes his mind. He heads top because he sees Ghost up there, and it's a lot of happy feet happening on the side of Afrika Freak. They think about a piggy bank gank, where both the teleport users go to the same lane and just kill the enemy side laner, but they remember that Shen is the kind yeah. of ace up, ace up the sleeve there. You know, that's the padding of the deck from the side of Sandbox to make that much less reliable get really big value from Shen against Jarvan because apart from the Q EQR, everything else is going to be negated by yeah. the Spirit's Refuge. So they think better of that. They go back to the sideline and that plays once again to the hands of Sandbox. Yeah, and I like that you use that as a reference because stacking the deck in your favor feels like exactly what Sandbox have done. They've lost every skirmish so yeah. far this game. Every sort of display of mechanics in League of Legends that normally wins you games, especially in your solo queue matches, is, has gone towards the Afrika Freaks, but Sandbox are just winning by being at better positions on the map and taking everything that they possibly can better than the Afrika Freaks. And all these talented mechanical players on Afrika, they've got at least four of them. And Jelly is a solo queue star of his own, as Aiming does take a burst there, yep. are saying, I could kill him, we should fight. They're saying all those things, and they know they're at great item spots, but that has to be frustrating because when it comes to stage play, no real wins to speak of. And when it comes to this game, that is being ran around. Yeah, well, it's a chance now for the Afrika Freaks to fight for this uh, Mountain Drake, but not with aiming in the mid lane and Yukal waiting to throw out that claw. Sandbox do find themselves relatively routed. Ultimate is going to land there on Onflake, but he has the World Ender. It'll take a while for them to kill him, and we'll see whether Dove can offer anything back in the meantime. Umbral Dash is up and available thanks to 9.3. And the Aatrox walks away. They don't invest any flashes. They don't feel like they can close out the kill. And that means that it's just a another bloodless fight where Sandbox trades up. Another one to add to the cavalcade we've seen this game. The frustration, no doubt, is growing. And remember, we had a, have a data point to refer to. We're sitting there halfway through, 30 minutes into yeah. game number one of the telecom war saying, Maybe the experience advantage SKT has is going to manifest in a game-losing mistake. And then Zenit very much followed that yeah. up with a huge individual error. Any errors like that from Afrika and Sandbox are poised to just swoop in and take a Baron and then drop Jace, Zoe plus Baron equals Game Ender push potentially. The thing that I'm really confused about and also just fascinated about, Papa, is that that sentence even exists here in 2019. You see this matchup on paper without seeing the rest of the year, and Afrika Freaks versus Sandbox should be Afrika with the experience, even if you know what the roster is. It's just absolutely insane that this team coming in from Challenger, the team that promotes second underneath Dom One Gaming, are now second place here in the LCK, and we're using sentences like Sandbox of the team with all the experience and the level-headedness is right now Dread's been routed and he's most likely gonna go down. Yeah, there we go On fleek just dives on top of him and dashes away Three milling in mid lane are being run around the map by now the death squad of Sandbox Ghost's gonna have to slowly mill away from this one First pick actually goes the way of Sandbox and now they back towards Baron so he throws out Paddle Stars, and how will a freak a deal with this Baron start? Yeah, Baron is going to get started here. Sandbox of old, rearing its head as Ghost in position for a flank, but he's going to get found out. But that just means more time is being bought here for Sandbox on the Baron. They've got a Mountain Drake as Summit dives on forward, but Jace isn't exactly a frontliner. That's a nice double taunt coming in from Joker. That might be all it can offer, but in goes Ghost. The Hemo play gets a whole bunch of work done, and now Keen has to find his way out of this fight. There is no option, but Sandbox are very low, and I don't think they can go back to the Baron very quickly, and nor will they be able to catch up to Keen. Look like it'll be a disaster for Afrika. It's not ideal, but it's a two for one, and Baron stops. That's the most important thing. No smite was there, as Dread is the one that went down. 
they be able to stop Jarvan's back? They cannot. Ooh, I think even close. approaches with the Qs. That was closer than we first appreciated. Watching this replay, it's a 4v4 for now because they know that Vlad was starting to go the most defensive way around. Looks like it could be bigger, but the E actually misses from Ghost on most after the flash. The R doesn't get maximum value. It could have been just a game ender, but it actually ends up being a decent defense of the Baron by Afrika. Yeah, and keeping aiming alive is the reason why they couldn't go back there. As uh, aiming being alive may not be a thing that's true for too much longer, as Ghost clears up mini wave, but they're not able to get on top of the Ezreal as the Aatrox and the Black. Aiming mean, continues to push. He is still just the strongest person on the rift, but Ghost is ready to change that narrative and stacking happening on that second tier item. Ghost is level 15, as is aiming. They've had a lot of side lane time as everyone's on going Leak around. Is also level 15 still has a two-level advantage over Dread. You know why that is? It's because Afrika spent so much time as a death squad that couldn't find any kills, yeah. that actually Summit and Onflake are two levels ahead of their opponents, and Keen only now narrowing that to one level. Precisely. So Summit very close to hitting that level cap. Sandbox wanting to throw this power around before it becomes irrelevant. Level 18s will be hit relatively soon as Keen trying to find an engagement. He's going to dive straight on forward with the baby cage. He's kicked out of his own cage. And now we've got the stand united and Keen is going to get taunted up. Spirit Refuge does a lot of work here as they dive the back line, but a freak of freaks don't find Ghost. too much joy. Ghost is running on forward. Dove is poking from the back line and you've got Shock Blast flying in. On Fleek even survives and Ghost grabs the first kill. Look at the explosion of magic damage in the back line. And this time the Jarvan ain't going anywhere. It's a double kill for Dove. And they're just chasing down the Afrika Freaks. That's a triple kill. Can we make it a quadra? The answer is no. But Dread cannot defend this Baron. The moment you commit and don't get kills, Zoe and Jace can just rain down hell from range. And there's nothing you can do. No full disengage available for Afrika. They stopped the Baron the first time. This time they're losing multiple objectives. Yeah, the inner turret is going to be picked up at the same time as the Baron. And what has Sandbox been doing all day? They've been taking just the most objectives from any sort of advantage that they might have. Even if it doesn't look like an advantage on paper, this has been a masterclass of map positioning and objective taking. And you can see already as well, the vision available from Sandbox where they needed it was also great. If the best use of a Sejuani's time is at 31 minutes trying to solo a Drake, you know things have gone real bad, Atlas. They yeah. know that this has started. The ping was on it already. And I uh, don't even know whether he can finish it. 2,000 health is not something he's going to be able to burst down, and he has to get out of the pit. Thanks for the leash, says Sandbox. Well, that Insult. was sad. Insults meeting injury yeah. a lot oh, yeah. today, Papa Smith. That's a line we've said a couple of yeah. times, but uh, could it be any more... They're best friends at this point. Exactly. Yeah, don't worry. It's like we don't even need to introduce them. It feels like, you know, that friend that you've introduced to your other friends like 600 times yep. and they've started to get really annoyed. Yeah, insult and injury are feeling like that right now. Definitely the eighth first, in best, uh, first uh, introduction yeah. was conducted yep. today. And the eye rolls were had by many. Mm -hmm. Sandbox now have Jay, Zoe, and a Baron, and that's real bad for a freak. <laughs> yep. Not to mention a Vladimir, who's also uh, at a pretty decent point at this stage. And uh, after having a couple of decent team fights, Ghost is making me a believer in uh, the Holy Ghost that uh, the LCK commentators and fans have been calling in. I think we need Spirit back in the lineup, but unsure if that's going to salvage anything for Afrika. Looking to join the other world's representatives marooned on 2-7. and seven. Yeah. They lose this series. Only Jinnah is below them. This will mean that my ladder that I want moving up the wins column is uh, one step closer to the truth. This Hama Life is the next one that has to do something here as Yukal taking a lot of damage on the top side. Infernal oh. Chains means he's just dead. Not a chance to use anything there. The ultimate even on cooldown, not sure where he used it. It goes, oh my god, the amount of health. He was just yo-yoing his on fleek is going to go golden. Doesn't actually pop the GA. Has used the ultimate already as Ghost dives forward. See you aiming. You are not doing anything, my friend, as he gets onto the fountain, but I don't think that's far enough away from a Sandbox Gaming who were one and four for the majority of this game. The slowest early game we've seen from this team and methodically crush Afrika Freaks under their boot. These are words that are very good summations of a game that, like you say, preseason and the reality oh so different running yeah. around Afrika Freaks trying to unleash a death squad that was just no one ever home for the side of Sandbox. They kill Ghost a couple of times. They try to pick 
the Shen, but the moment Shen got a QSS, he could actually just be that tasty bait. Yeah. No one home for the actual punishment. And every time they try to run this roster that Afrika clearly think is the way forward, they are completely battered around and understand that there's so much work to be done to actually make it stage ready for the LCK. And I think it's worse than what we were talking about because we're talking about this Afrika Freak squad